Hey YouTube, so we just got some new fish for my wife's fish tank and I just put in a chunk of some brine shrimp. So I wanted to show the new fish and make a feeding video at the same time. <laughs> Hopefully everything is going to stay alive. The water's been pristine so I'm hoping that they stay healthy. But I've added a purple, an orange, and a red Glowfish Danio to the tank. And the fish really, really pop right now. Let me try flipping the light on and see if that helps the camera. Yeah, that kind of helps a little bit, I think. So there's also about nine red cherry shrimp in here. Forgive the algae on the glass. My other female was saddled and is no longer, so I think she's pregnant. My males are certainly really red in this tank. And the java moss here has really taken off from the last time I made a video. As you can see, there's a bit of an algae problem on this fake jellyfish. Um, I've tried reducing the amount of time the light was on because it was on for most of the day. So I've turned it off. It's only getting about 8 or 9 hours of light right now. It's an 11 watt bulb on a 8 gallon tank. So it might still be getting a little too much light, but I'm going to reduce it slowly. I might just let it grow and add a nerite because I kind of enjoy watching nerites and having kind of a natural algae population to support the snail makes it a lot of fun. It's not necessarily just to clean up the tank, although it does do that. It, if you let your tank grow a little bit of algae and then put in a snail or two, it makes it really nice to watch those snails because you can, can support it with a little bit of algae. I think the usual recommendation for nerites is one per five gallons. Um, this is an eight gallon tank and I would only stick one in here. They're pretty voracious eaters and they get pretty big. Uh, they look small when you buy them a lot of times, but they can get pretty big. Alright, I'm going to turn the light back off and see if that... You'll have to let me know in the comments if in the future I should make videos with or without the lights on for this tank. Uh, I'm kind of leaning toward without because it just makes everything pop. It makes it look a lot more like the glowfish tank that it's supposed to be. So future plans for this tank are uh, a couple of tetras, glowfish tetras probably, but I was talking to the owner of the local fish store here. He's kept fish for a long, long time. And uh, he said that he's had a lot of problems with glowfish tetras, and uh, they're not very healthy. He said they just start looking real sickly after about a week. And uh, he's not sure if it's the water quality. Uh, we have a very soft, uh, basic water here. Uh, or if it's just that they're not very healthy fish in general. So if anybody keeps glowfish tetras or knows anything about them, if you could let me know. I know the glowfish in general experience a reduced fecundity. They have fewer babies. They reproduce less often than most other Danios or the Tetras. Uh, we don't really know why. It could be due to the overproduction of the fluorescent protein in the body that could just put a lot of demand and stress on the fish. Or it could be due to something else that we don't even know yet. Um, so I think it's kind of an interesting question. It's not one that I would ever have the chance to figure out. But 
I'm hoping they might breed at some point, especially with a big mop of java moss in the bottom, some gravel exposed, and all those fake plants in the back. I, I think they'll feel safe. The shrimp certainly do. They swim around, and the Danios don't bother the shrimp, at least not yet. The blue one has never bothered them. Uh, occasionally he'll go harass them for a piece of food they're eating, and they'll give it up, but he never attacks them, so that's that's a plus. Alright, thanks for watching.